Yeah, hi everybody, Ryan once again here. So we've had some um, video requests or questions, I guess, in the comments section. Um, we got had one about like what I what stuff I carry in the truck with me. Um, so we're going to go over that right now. And then um, the other one, we've had a couple of questions about the, the missions deletions, kind of what that process looks like. So I'm going to do that today too, hopefully. Um, so first thing, I've drug everything out of my boxes. Um, I've got a couple things here, maybe one or two things missing, but then and some other stuff that I don't typically carry, but I'll, I'll talk about why I got it with me right now. Um, so kind of dive right into it. Uh, start, I got a little toolbox here. You can get these at Harbor Freight or whatever. Very pretty, pretty cheap. Yeah, you know, twenty or thirty dollars. Uh, so we got a lot of different things in here. A uh, couple different uh, adjustable wrenches, crescent wrenches, uh, long handle three eighths ratchet, uh, wire cutters, a couple of vice grips, uh, some crow's feet, uh, standard. Um, I haven't had to use these, but you never know. Utility knife. Uh, quarter inch nut driver or you can put quarter inch sockets on that guy there uh, and I thought you could actually I got one of these where you can actually put a ratchet on top of it but I guess that's not the one needle nose pliers and we got a long handled uh, quarter inch ratchet there uh, extension half inch extension uh, Torx uh, kind of Allen type of uh, set there but they're Torx bits and uh, this here is a you can put different tips in this you know like a ratchet type screwdriver uh, here I've got a quarter inch two quarter inch drive set so I was up at my local Ace Hardware and they had these things marked down to like eight dollars or something so I, I couldn't resist uh, buying them so I bought uh, two sets here uh, two six point sets I got a metric one 11 piece and a SAE 11 piece here, so they're right there. Everything's all locked in. Uh, I actually picked this little pipe wrench up when I was in the Navy. Um, these little guys here, you'd be amazed how many times I actually use this to get broken bolts and other stuff out. So that's a nice little tool. Little uh, flat tip screwdriver, metric uh, Allen wrenches, little uh, little bitty Phillips screwdriver. Little set of uh, vice grips and uh, needle nose vice grips in here. And then uh, this is a nice little tool here I like a lot. Uh, I actually could use it more in the shop than I have it in here. Uh, just a little 3 8 palm drive ratchet, it's real nice. And uh, I got a 3 8 to half inch uh, adapter. And then I got a half inch to 3 8 adapter in there. A couple more extensions. Tubing cutter, you never know. So that's pretty much the, uh, the top here. So down here, I so got a standard wrenches up to an inch and an eighth for the most part, from basically down to nothing a quarter inch. Another pair of vice grips, bigger ones. Another set of channel locks. Two little pry bars, and I've got a longer pry bar over there. Right now, then um, I've got metric in here up to 22 millimeter, and there's a 19 millimeter uh, speed wrench here, which uh, is the same as three quarter for the most part. So that's good if you ever have to cage your brakes. It's nice where you can you can lock that that caging tool in or bolt in and you can ratchet down real quick or use a three quarter, same thing. I've actually got a three quarter in here as well. Uh, big flat tip screwdriver. Uh, standard type uh, half inch drive ratchet. And I've got a long handled half inch drive ratchet. And these are, like I said, metric wrenches up to 22 millimeter. And then we've got a standard uh, Allen wrenches here and just got a couple miscellaneous uh, wrenches as well I got a service wrench here that's 3 8 7 16 and get this out of the way. a couple more screwdrivers I like to have a lot of screwdrivers another pair of vice grips here 
And then I uh, just picked these up at uh, Harbor Freight just to keep in the truck. Two deep well 3.8 sets uh, so I can keep my better snap on ones in the shop here at home. So you know, if you lose these, they're not that much to replace at Harbor Freight. And I got this, these at home, I've got two of these. I got these at Home Depot. This is a real sharp uh, tubing cutter. And the reason I have this in the truck is uh, I've got silicone hose and heater core hose here. I keep air. Because there's a lot of lines up there underneath the hood. So I bought this uh, silicone hose up at Kenworth. And uh, I think I got this other regular rubber hose at Napa. Just in case, I've I had trouble in the past with uh, those heater core lines and all those other lines up there, the small lines. And this is real nice. It just cuts through them like butter. You know, if you if you need to make a line real quick, then kind of with that, I keep a hole. We'll go through this box in a minute, but I keep a nice clamp set there, which these aren't technically the type of clamps you want for silicone hose, but they'll get you out of a jam real quick if need be. So that's that. And then um, I've got a longer extension. We like said another pair of ice grips, big uh, chisel there. Um, we've got metric uh, Allen sockets here. And then I've got a set of uh, Torx bits that you can put on your ratchet. And these are, these are magnetic. And then um, again, like I said, I picked this up at Ace Hardware for like $12 or something. Nice little 3 8 set just to keep in or just to have. And then. I think I got these at Ace Hardware too. They had this big sale, so another little little set of metric wrenches. Like I said, if I see cheap tools, you, like I said, you can't, I don't know what the deal is at Ace Hardware up there. They're always selling this stuff for close to nothing for some reason. And I think this was a, this is another standard set, so. So yeah, well, 5 16 to 7 8 and like I said, I've got the, uh, the bigger wrenches here as well, up to an inch and an eighth. But it's nice to have everything kind of organized so that way if you're in a situation you know where it's at and, and you can take care of things quickly instead of digging through a bunch of the junk trying to find what you need. So that's kind of the, the toolbox there. I need to put that 7 16 inside. <laughs> So kind of more with tools here. Uh, got a deep well set of a half inch drive. And this is from three eighths up to inch and a quarter. Like I said, half inch drive deep wells, uh, impact sockets. So we got that guy. And then um, I believe these are metric. Uh, yeah, metric nut drivers. So, I mean, a lot of these uh, across to like an eight millimeter is about the same as a 5 sixteenths and, and so on. So that's nice to have as well for hose clamps and all that stuff. So, uh, other tools. So I got a longer pry bar here and you can always use a pry bar for something. Call hammer, like I talked about this before. If um, you got nails in your trailer deck floor or something, then you got to pull those out. Always good to have a, a call hammer. And then um, if you got a pry bar or something, you can't get one out, you can always kind of use that pry bar or, or something for leverage too, if you got one that's kind of stubborn. So uh, keep a little two pound beater in there. You never know if you need to beat on something. And then my big uh, channel locks uh, come in handy for taking fuel filters or whatever off and a lot of other things. And then a um, half inch breaker bar, so. Uh, as far as hand tools, I think that pretty much does it. Um, get some more clamps in here. Uh, power tools. Keep a uh, bought this new Dewalt grinder, uh, 20 volt max, brushless. Uh, nice to have uh, if you got to cut off like high security seals, or if um, some security company wants to put a boot on your tire. There's that little door on the side, and you can actually cut that little door off, and then take your uh, your big flat tip screwdriver and you can back him off and you can throw their boot in the weeds and go on with life so it's good for that then you got a uh, impact driver here got a uh, half inch impact 
Dewalt brushless and a half inch drill, hammer drill. And uh, keep several different, uh, keep a lot of batteries and a couple other extra grinding discs as well. I got a cutting wheel and then a grinding wheel also. And I bring my charger. And um, again, more vice grips. Uh, like I said, vice grips are nice. Like I said, if you if you got a manual slide uh, tandems on your trailer, for some reason that uh, that handle it won't, the spring's broken or something, it won't hang out. You can pull it out and you can put your vice grips on it and hold it out. And uh, that, that can kind of save your life if you don't have somebody else to, to hold it back there. So keep a lot of vice grips and another set of wire cutters. And then um, for the uh, impact driver, keep a whole set of different tips for, uh, for that guy. So you never know. And then we got another um, 3 8 set shallow well metric sockets. So I think I got those cheap somewhere. This is actually Craftsman, which I think Craftsman's all made in China or wherever now. So like everything else a uh, little butane torch which i use uh, usually with my wiring kit here which we'll go to in a second uh, for heat shrink and all that and if you have to do any i don't solder much stuff but uh, mainly for heat shrink so or if my i've got locking fuel caps on my truck in the winter time you'll get water in there and it'll actually freeze like some places you get it way up in the mountains out in wyoming or or uh, Montana, wherever, where it gets down below zero, those locks will freeze up, and this is nice to, to heat those locks up. You know, on, if you have locking fuel caps or trailer locks or whatever, it's good to have a little butane torch. And I have a, I have a propane torch as well. Uh, the crystal clear Gorilla Tape is uh, nice. It's thick stuff. It sticks really well even to dirt. Uh, I use this uh, if I, if I, sometimes I've, I've taken loads where I have three or four placards, and you might only have one placard holder on the trailer, so this is really nice. It, it does, it sticks, it does really well. Um, then, of course, 16 foot tape measure. So, I always like to be able to measure clearances and stuff like that if I have to. And, um, and again, for you, if you got some type of power tools, Dewalt, Milwaukee, Makita, whatever, uh, keep your charger with you so you can keep your batteries charged up. So, don't do any good to have a power tool with a dead battery. I think that's everything in there. Um, next my is my electrical bag. Again, I got a bunch of assortment of uh, clamps and stuff like that. Extra wiring here, never know. And um, I got this little multimeter clamp meter here. So I got from Matco, so it's does everything. Uh, you know, amperage, uh, you can do a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, continuity tests. So if you're looking for a break in a wire, you can do a continuity test with this. And like I said, it has the clamp as well. So you can test for a draw and all that. And, and for your standard voltage, this has an electrical probe too. So this is a little bit more than what you need, but it's nice to have a, a voltmeter or, or a multimeter of some type for testing. Big assortment of fuses, pretty much minis, maxis, and everything in between ATSM, ATM. Yeah, all that good stuff is in there. So I've had this for a long time. Then I uh, keep a lot of uh, electrical tape. Electrical tape's good for a lot of stuff. Then, um, yeah, and got a, uh, for clamp, cramping, uh, crimping lugs or terminals on the wire, I got this guy here. Then I usually use like uh, the heat, heat shrink stuff, heat shrink tubing, which here's a bigger piece. And so you can find that at Nap or wherever so when you're putting terminals on. Spare governor, you know, if that goes out, it's the newer one. So then just a little bit of everything, miscellaneous stuff that I've just kind of collected over the years. Just throw it in here, like I said, you got a good selection of terminals or lugs or and all that good stuff in here down in the bottom of that, but we don't need to get into that rat's nest. So where are we at here? So we've gotten, oh, the other thing, I think, what's in here? Oh, actually I have another malt meter here, so. My Radio Shack, when our Radio Shack closed up in town, and these these were like $200, I think, and they had them marked down to like 30 bucks. I think I bought two or three of them, and just got them saved up. So I, I keep this one up in the cab, and keep this one down here. So, uh, so I think we got all this covered. Uh, some waterless hand cleaners, nice. That's just nice to have, period. Uh, you know, with fuel, dealing with fuel and all that stuff. And uh, I like the seven millimeter, or seven mil, uh, nitrile disposable gloves. I get these at Harbor Freight, about the only place I can find them at now. And these ones, these are really good. The seven mils are from, like I said, from Harbor Freight. 
Yeah, they used to be like eleven ninety nine. Now they're up to almost twenty dollars. Cause like I said, you got people driving around in their cars and try wearing them and whatnot. So uh, is what it is. So yeah, for us that actually need them, you know, we got to pay the price now. So, but uh, these are really nice. These do, like I said, this the the seven mil. Like they they don't break. I mean, you can in chemicals like cleaning carburetors and stuff. They they do, they do a really nice job. And uh, like if I'm putting grease on my fifth wheel, I'll wear those too. So do do a nice job with those. Uh, <clears throat> last tool thing I think is uh, I got another little nut driver and drill bit set here. A little bit of little bit of everything in here so it's just nice to have these I, I got this from my grandma's house after my grandpa passed away yeah it's a nice little set here and all this stuff will work in that impact dewalt impact driver as well so it's just you never know what you'll need you might never use it but like i said the time that i take that out you know or anything out then that's when you actually need it uh I got a cheetah tank here for setting beads on tires. I don't normally carry this. And if you guys watched when I put um, put these drive tires on here at the house, right here in the driveway, uh, with these with these Bridgestones, I never even had to use that. Uh, but now most of the Landstar trailers and a lot of company trailers out there, they've got the uh, self-inflation uh, system, which I've done a video on that as well, um, to where if they've got that self-inflation on them and you got a tire that's off the bead, you can actually just Air the air the tri up, trailer up, you know, charge the trailer, wait a couple minutes, and drive off, and it'll actually air the tire up and, and maintain it. Uh, so now, uh, I just did a drop and hook here last week, and I've got an extra leash trailer that doesn't have that system on it. So it makes me really nervous when I show up, you know, up there to pick my trailer up at Twinsburg, uh, where I where I drop my trailers until I got like another 50 tons of gravel coming next week, and I'm going to be dropping my trailers here at the house. From now on, but uh, we're in the current situation, I've, I'm really nervous about going up there and grabbing my trailer at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. or something, and I got a flat tire off the bead, then I'm kind of screwed without that inflation system. So I, you can buy these on Amazon or wherever. Uh, I don't think I paid. I don't think I even paid $100 for this. So you can actually set the bead with that. You air that up. You know, you're going to need an airline like this with a uh, glad hand on it. Um, I bought this at one of the truck stops and I actually took the the original air truck off of it and I put a uh, just a regular quick disconnect on it so you can hook other other stuff up to it if I wanted to hook an impact or anything up to it or air or an air gun to blow the truck out or, or whatever so uh, nice to have that you know this is 50 feet or so I think so it'll reach to the back the, the trailer tires but so those kind of go together. Um, if you have a trailer that doesn't have the uh, self entire inflation system or you know um, or the company you work for doesn't it's kind of nice to have one of these to where you're not stranded you know at least you can get air in that tire or get it blown back up and you can go to the nearest place or whatever to get it fixed and not have to wait on somebody to come to you so uh got a uh pack R primary filter wrench here to take that canister off and then I always keep a primary fuel filter with me because you never know uh, got some big zip ties uh, extra seals which I don't really say the hose clamps duct tape and I keep a lot of extra parts in here and a lot of other chemicals so uh, gear oil uh, for like the front wheel hubs, uh, synthetic 75-140, I mean, whatever your truck takes. And I keep some 80-90 as well. Uh, brake cleaner's nice, cleaning nasty stuff off if you have to. This is more of a winter, diesel 911. I'm actually gonna take that out of the truck today. It's more of a winter thing. I'm gonna take my chains off because it's pretty much over for the year. Uh, we got some super cleaner degreaser contact cleaner for electrical contacts and then um, de-icer for lock de-icer and all that I'm actually gonna take that out today and then a uh, thread compound seal lock for uh, you know uh, coolant fittings or whatever if you got to take a fitting out or an air fitting so that's this is kind of an anaerobic stuff to where it actually breaks loose that's nice to have and then uh, got some more uh, Loctite the blue stuff WD-40. <laughs> got 
to all these other sensors. Then I keep a, uh, I actually got a couple uh, for putting refrigerant into the AC system. So I've got two of these here. So one of these, this one here, there's two different types now. Uh, then the new type of uh, refrigerant cans actually have a valve in them. Like the old ones, you used to just puncture them, then you would leave them hooked up. And then the, the new EPA ones, they have a little valve, so you have to have this actually has that little deal that that uh, works on the new cans. So they both have a gauge on them. So keep those in there, and um, keep an extra tube of grease. And usually carry the grease gun with me. You know, if I'm on longer trips, uh, like if I'm out in the wintertime, if I'm out in California or Arizona where it's warm, I'll usually uh, grease the truck in the parking lot where it's nice and warm instead of here where it's zero or ten degrees. Get a PV blaster, basically the same thing as WD-40. And um, keep an extra fan belt. Always like whenever I, I'll change my belt. I don't wait for my belts to break. Uh, I'll change them out. And uh, then I keep the old ones in the truck just in case I ever throw a belt. So that was have an extra one. Um, got a whole box of uh, extra lights here for the trailer and for the truck. Extra set of glad hands. And I've got a whole box of these little seals as well. Uh, so that's kind of that in there. Then um, I keep a whole array of sensors, uh, you know, a temperature sensor for the uh, DPF, SCR. Uh, this is the uh, temperature and pressure sensor for the intake manifold to keep that. And I think this is for EGR temperature sensor as well. And I actually, as you guys know, I've done a video on it before. I changed out my belt tensioners. I keep the uh, Keep the old ones. I mean, they're making noise and stuff, but you know, if they ever go out, I got the old one in the, the old belt I can put back on if I have to. And that's uh, this is the do I got to put that on. That don't really count for this <laughs> dosing module for the uh, SCR. I've got to put that on here sometime. And I think this is actually a extra yeah knock sensor. So. I don't even know if that's any good, but it's in here. So that's pretty, I think that's pretty much everything here. Yeah, uh, other than straps are the only thing else. I keep a lot of straps, uh, Landstar, some loads. I've done uh, like, like slot machines out of Vegas and stuff coming back this way. And they might require like 20 or 25 straps. So I keep a lot of those in the truck as well. So. Uh, this is a small bucket there, but I'll, I got another bucket of them in there also. So, um, yeah, the uh, Super Clean, they, uh, they were nice enough to send us a box of stuff to test out with the kind of send it coming in the winter, so I didn't get to, been kind of nasty weather, so I haven't got to use everything yet. Kind of coming in the summer, we'll uh, try some of those products out and see how they perform, which I've used their stuff before, and it's usually pretty halfway decent product. So, but uh, I think think that is everything. Uh, I think we had somebody asking about uh, my cuff lock in the truck, which uh, actually Landstar, you get these kits, the Landstar, it's Warlock, and that comes with the uh, the cuff lock, and actually my, um, it comes with a, with a uh, fifth wheel lock as well for your trailer, a kingpin lock is the word I'm looking for, the whole set and a uh, padlock, they're all, they're all keyed together, it's all the same key. And uh, like I said, you get these to Landstar will make you purchase one of these if you come on with them. But even if you don't, it's a it's a good product also. I mean, uh, it's nice to put on your, your valves in there so nobody can drive your truck away. A lot of times I'll leave my truck running at the pump. I'll put that cuff lock on and I'll go in and do what I got to do if I got to go in this, in this stuff. It's kind of a shady area. So, uh, yeah, not too bad. And it's nice because they're all keyed the same as well. So. So that's pretty much it guys, that's about everything that I carry in the truck, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, so I hope that uh, kind of answers that question and helps you out, gives you some insight on uh, what you kind of should be taking. Um, also, I, I, I don't have it out here, I got my, uh, my Bosch HDS 200, which I think they're out the HDS 250 now. Uh, I've got that up there in the truck too. We've got a video out on that. So that's a nice diagnostics tool or uh, whatever you're using as a diagnostic tool. That's something else good to have in your toolbox also. So so this is pretty much it, I think. Um, again, there's probably people got stuff to add or take away or whatever, but this is what I, what I kind of do. So again, hope that answers the question and helps you out. Uh, 
And uh, you guys know we're always doing the uh, Landstar stuff, owner op stuff, truck maintenance stuff, and all that, and kind of getting into soon a new uh, on site uh, truck farm equipment and heavy equipment maintenance type of business coming up pretty soon. Um, I'm going to keep my truck and um, probably going to uh, make some kind of deal, put some in at, maybe looking at buying another truck to put on the road as well. So, so uh, watch out for that. So, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, like I said, we got the farming channel too, so if uh, you're interested in that type of stuff, check that out. Uh, but other than that, guys, uh, subscribe, uh, like the video, hit the bell for the thumb, or <laughs> hit the bell to get the updates. Uh, like I said, give us a thumbs up, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.